Papo, this beautiful boy. He does send us through some very, very thick vegetation. And, and that is no surprise. That is to... He's, you know, he's very intrigued. He's smelling his... Whether he's looking for something to eat or he's trying to track down somebody else that's been around here. We'll just have to wait and see. Oh, he's smelling everything and marking as he goes along. He really is an ab absolutely beautiful boy. You can see that dewlap quite nicely now. Doesn't look like he's had anything to eat since last night though. Well, he's come to a big termite mound. Another thing that he could be doing around here, which is something that he seems to really enjoy, is dig out warthogs. He often goes and inspects around various entrances, looking for a little piglet, maybe a little bit, something a little bit bigger, seen as though he is so large. But we're going to try and stick with him. Luckily, it's not too bad here, the vegetation. The grass is just too long. I just hope he doesn't keep going east. Okay, we're going to have to get moving now so we don't lose him. Uh, is because if he goes further east, we're going to get to those massive drainage systems around Gallego. And you've seen from the amount of times uh, that we, of course, have been driving around. Oh, hang on. No, we've got a bit of a roadblock now. I will keep going. Now, Adam, you're wondering, what is the range of a male leopard's territory? Um, Adam, it varies uh, quite a large amount, of course, from leopard to leopard. Uh, in this particular area, I've noticed that the, the, the big boys, like, for instance, the, the Tinganas, the Anderson males, uh, the, the Mvu no, Mvula's not really marking so much. I think he's enjoying his retirement. Uh, you go down south, uh, Mashabeni, all of those leopards have got really, really, really big territories. They almost traverse over five or six different properties, depending on the size of them, of course. Quite difficult to give an exact amount, um, but I reckon easily up here about 50 square kilometers. Uh, yes, it's a at the back of the sickle bush. You can just sort of see his rosettes now. Now, there could potentially also be a lot of game around here. Lots of impala, inyala, dacre, steenbok in this grass. He's just moving slowly. You can see there's his head. I wonder if he's not, but maybe also a little bit hungry. It's been, Tingana has been quite interesting to watch the last few days. His territorial sort of patrols that he's going on, are, like I said, they're extensive. He's thorough. He doesn't miss a bush. He doesn't let a scent go past him that he's uncertain of. Oh, he's coming out very slowly. He's coming out. There he goes, slinking through the grass. And he's close to, he's not too far away. And look how he just completely disappears. So we'll try and keep up with him again. Maybe he spotted something up ahead. But remember, the other day I saw, of course, that young male leopard dart across the road that we weren't able to identify. Now I wonder if there's also not a young boy hanging around here. We've been seeing loads and loads of leopard tracks at the moment. Right, let me try and reposition here. I'm going to just drive over this fallen shrub. Luckily for us, Tingana, he's settled down now. I think he was just a bit startled, of course, after seeing somebody on foot. But there he is. Using that little shrub just to get a bit of vantage, get a bit higher up to look across the long grass and completely disappears again. Watch how he pops out. Look, how, look at that. Do you see how, look how well camouflaged he is? This always amazes me, and I can see it a hundred times. But it's unbelievable how they're able to completely disappear. Even a big male leopard like this, which is not tiny and small like Shongile, so you can imagine how close we could have been to Shongile and just not even realized that she was there. Okay, what we'll do is we'll try reposition again.
try go through this way. Luckily we've got the smaller cars so it does make it a little bit easier and also no guests so we can just, well we just duck and dive and then off we go. You ready? You're a guest. No, and part of the furniture now. Let's watch your head here. Lift that one up and over the camera. This one I will push out of the way with the car. There we go. Right. Here he comes. This is lovely. Slinking through the long grass just with a little bit of golden light catching his eyes every now and then. And this always seems to be the case, doesn't it? There we go. Look at him moving just at the back. He's just moving to the right now. And off he goes. Right, let's go up forward again. This is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to just play cat and mouse, go forward, go back, try and get in a better position. But if we can stay in front of him, that'll be the best thing. Here he comes. Oh, wonderful. We're ahead of him. Here he goes. Walking right past us. And you know, more and more that I see Tingan, I'm going to go forward again so we can get another view. The more and more I see him, I can see exactly where Hosanna gets his looks from. He's definitely his father's child. He's almost identical. And even the mannerisms between the two of them are quite similar. Obviously, Tingan is now just got his hunting skills and just the whole vibe about him is a lot more refined. Whereas Hosanna, I'm going to go again because we're going to lose him. Uh, is of course he's a little bit on the clumsy side still but he'll get there he'll he'll turn into a beautiful big male leopard that's not so clumsy and falling out of trees relatively soon okay so Tsingana's just cut in front of us no, I don't want to get too oh, I think we're gonna have to go through here let me just see no Whee, how high is this one right we're going to try and get over this. I don't know how well this is going to work, but we'll try. Let's go back across to Steph while I do a bit more maneuvering. We do, and we're going to have to say goodbye to Tingana very soon because there's a long line of guides who would love to come and see him this morning. So I think as we watch him disappear through the long grass, I'm going to tell Tax and Aubrey that they can call the next vehicle in. There's many photographic guests on the property at the moment, and I know a sighting like this would be so valuable uh, to them, especially because of the long grass at the moment. It is making game viewing tough. Uh, Tax, you can pull, I'm going to fumble, you can call the next guard in. Yeah, I know Matata. Cool. I, Wow, thank you. I'm being offered all sorts of things for managing to pick up on this leopard. Because remember, Andrew had him earlier, had spotted him on foot, and then he'd given everyone else, Byron, he'd given Tax, and he'd given Aubrey the slip. And I was just listening to their conversations on the radio as to where I think uh, he was going to pop out. And well, it worked in my favor. I was checking, of course, around for elephants, and the elephants were hiding away from us, and I'm sort of glad that they were. Because if it wasn't for him, I don't think we would have found this leopard. Right place at the right time. I saw his head sticking out of the long grass just off of the side of the road. And I sort of stopped and went, hang on, that's something. And just before I could say, fur, can we have a closer look at whatever that is? I saw that it was indeed a leopard. He crossed the road. 